Hello and welcome back. Without wasting any time, let's experiment with gradients to create interesting Instagram looks. So let's start by creating a couple of gradients. I prefer to use rectangles for this purpose. After I hide the image, I will draw the first rectangle. Idea is to have multiple rectangles with gradients on top of each other and have the gradients blend in each other. So I will add a gradient by using the gradient tool and change the begin and end colors. The end color for this gradient will be something purplish and I will lower the opacity to zero as there will be another color beneath it later. For the starting color, I'll use something bluish. We don't need to worry too much about the colors we choose. As we are using rectangles, we can always change them later on. That looks pretty good. I will duplicate this rectangle and modify the gradient so it starts from the right top. As I already have a color in there, I will lower the opacity of the starting color so we get a nice blend of colors there. After changing the color and the position of the end color, I will repeat the same steps two more times. So I have a rectangle where the gradient starts from the bottom right and another rectangle where the gradient starts from the bottom left. Choose the colors as you please. Usually bright and saturated colors work very well. Now that I have all the canvas covered, I will group the rectangles by selecting them and using the shortcut key command G. Excellent. Let me turn on the image. As the gradient contains a lot of transparency, we already see the effect of it, which is by the way, of course, not our end result. To finish up, I will change the blend mode to screen, which works very well with gradients, just like with lens flares. The result definitely creates a very interesting look. Now the cool part is that we can adjust the gradients as needed. For example, you can lower the opacity of a gradient layer to create a more fitting look. I noticed that the top contains too much blue. So if I lower the opacity of the first gradient, we get a much more pleasing image. While you're adjusting a composition, it is always a good idea from time to time to turn on and off your adjustments, so you can notice the changes much more better. Well, if you know me by now, you know I will adjust the blend range. If I lower the effect from the darker areas, it feels like the effect is gone. But when you turn the group on and off, you notice it is actually a very subtle effect. Especially when the effects are very subtle, the final result will be much more convincing. Let me adjust the blend range in a way that it dims the effect. Let's play again with the first layer and see what happens if we change the starting color of the gradient. Wow, this looks amazing. I think it can use a bit of green, especially on the top right. So let's adjust the color of the gradient starting from the top right. Gorgeous. Look how nice the green fits with the flowers right now. As a finishing touch, let me add a curves layer to get back more contrast. So let's pull down the shadows. Look at that, just wow. Let's have a look at the before and now look at what we did. We kind of faded the top left part, so the subject gets more attention right now. And the colors are nice, warm and romantic. And all of this with a couple of gradients and a curves adjustment. The magic of gradients at work. Let me undo all these steps until we're back at our starting point, just with the gradients in screen blend mode. Time to level up the magic. I will set the blend mode of the group back to normal and then group it again. Why am I grouping again? 
because I will be adding some adjustments on top of the gradients. In this new group, I will change the blend mode to color burn and adjust the blend ranges as shown. Basically, I'll keep the shadows and the highlights from the gradients and have it apply only to the darker parts of the image. This creates a very nice contrasty but a colorful image. Let's fine tune this further by adding an HSL adjustment on top of the gradients. This will allow us to shift the colors of the gradient giving different results. Just as before, I can modify the colors used in the gradients to fine tune the end result. Another tip, and I will show it for demonstration purposes here, is to duplicate a gradient and move it above the HSL or move it without duplicating. This way, you can have a gradient which is not affected by the HSL and modify its color to fine tune the end result. What you might notice is that the face of the model is actually too dark. So I will add a mask to the top level group and paint with black on her face to get the original color back, which will brighten her face again. Perfect. Time for some blend mode magic. Let me change the blend mode of the HSL adjustment to difference, which will bring more contrast to the image. A quick explanation why this is happening is because the difference blend mode generates dark pixels for pixels that are similar. So basically the HSL in difference blend mode creates a much darker output and combined with the color burn, this darkens the image even further. If you're interested in the difference blend mode, check out my video explaining in detail how the difference blend mode works. I'll put a link in the description. Let's have a look at what we have right now. It is quite a nice end result, especially if you're looking for a composition where the colors need to pop. But let's continue. Another very cool blend mode for the HSL adjustment is the add blend mode, which gives the end result a warmer look. Let me move the gradient above the HSL back to its original position. I'm also interested in how it looks without the HSL. Quite a difference. But this also actually looks very nice. And if you can't make a choice, why not have best of both worlds? And the tip to get the best of both worlds is lower the opacity. Now you have a bit of both. I'm also going to lower down the opacity of the parent group to dim down the effect. A beautiful end result. But let's get crazy. I will duplicate the original image and move it to the top. And apply the negation blend mode. Followed by an invert adjustment. To make sure that the invert only applies to the image, I will drag and drop it on top of the image so it becomes a child layer. Now, with the blend ranges, I can target the darker areas in the background and make them lighter. Notice how the area I am targeting right now is white, and with the left blend range curve, I lower its brightness so they are not white anymore. Basically, I remove the contrast a little. You notice this when I turn on and off the layer. Did I mention this was going to be crazy? Let's group this so we can add another blend mode on top of it. This time I will use screen 
to really brighten things up, we get this very lovely result. It's a bit too bright for what I had in mind, so let's open the blend ranges again and adjust it in a way so we get the contrast back again with bright colors. Another end result that looks amazing. But let me continue. Instead of using screen, I'm going to use color dodge and lower its opacity. Not bad at all. To better see the effect, let me select both groups and disable them to see the before and the after. I feel maybe this will look better without the HSL, so let me disable that. Looks great, but it is missing that romantic look. So to get that, I'm going to add a gradient map adjustment and I will use some warm colors. For example, orange for the mid-tones and yellow for the highlights. Once ready, I will change the blend mode of the gradient adjustment to darken and adjust the blend range so it is barely applied to it. Have a look at that, so romantic. Let's select the adjustments and disable them to see the before. What a difference that makes. You might be wondering now, this was a tutorial about gradients. What happened to the gradients? Let's have a look at the gradients. If I disable the gradient group, you can see their effect and you notice that they are pretty important here. The gradients have set the base on which we could further fine tune to get the end result. If I turn on and off the gradients one by one, you notice how they affect the end result. Well, this was a crazy video, I guess, but I hope you liked it and has inspired you. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe for more interesting videos. Until next time.